Now from verses 1 to 3 in John 1, it is evident that the Word is God and Creator who has created all things, which includes truth. Hence the Word is full of truth. So many things we can use with words to characterize the Word, who added to himself or became flesh. Not like John the Baptist who was born flesh. The Word who is God says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and, and everything in God is, and God was the Word. That's the Greek order, word order. And 1.3 says, there was nothing that was created that was nothing created by the Word. And from verses 1 to 13, it is evident that the Word who is God in a, is the life, <coughs> eternal and temporal life. Every moment that you're alive. He's creator. He keeps you alive. Believer or unbeliever. He was from the beginning of time and creation. and continues to be the light of men. Truth of men. That gives light the truth of God to every man. Whether they accept it or not. John 1, nine, Who from the beginning of time and creation has. And continues to graciously illuminate the word. As to the truth of who God is. Despite being rejected by men. Who deliberately have remained in darkness, alienated, and at enmity with God. John 1 5. He created the world, and so many are at enmity with him. He has continuously declared to men that he is, because he has made himself to be. The sole means by which an individual can be born of God as a child of God into an eternal life familiar relationship with God by grace through a moment of faith alone in his name alone John 1 12 to 13 we read that let's read that again that's that's just so awesome people would just read this but even people who seem to think they that they believe in Jesus and they maybe they do don't want to take the time Mr. Joseph Prince, to just take this into into stock, into to your understanding. But as many as received him, receive him. And even to those who believe in his name, they go together. To those who believe in his name, that's how you receive him, the word, who added to himself flesh, verse 14. And we find out as we read through this chapter and on, his name is Jesus. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God who were born, who were born. You see, we believed in his name, who were born not of blood, physical birth, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of a man's uh, decision, but of God. And all you did was believe in his name provide that for you. His name to provide eternal life for you. Awesome. So now you have that understanding instead of breezing through it and you jump right to 17. You can't do that. Keep moving. So when it says in John 16 uh, 116 and out of his fullness the fullness of his grace and truth John 114 did we all receive even grace in place of grace? What is, you know, and you, you can't skip over this. Ponder it. Ponder it. The statement is referring to the unmerited blessings that mankind receives time after time after time after time. Did I go on? Like the waves of the ocean. From the fullness of the grace and truth of the word, not the least of which are temporal life and that which sustains that life and the truth that he has made himself to be the sole means by which an individual can be born of God, made himself, added to himself humanity, died on the cross for the sins. You see how that, we're going to read this and then find as we keep reading in John chapters 2 and 3, especially 3, that he died on the cross for your sins. He has made himself to be the sole means by which an individual can be born of God. Sole means means only he 
and faith in him gets it. You don't have to acknowledge him in your own auspices as if you're doing something. You don't need to just believe in his name. By the sole means by which an individual can be born of God as a child of God into an eternal life, familiar relationship with God by grace. Through a moment of faith alone in his name alone, John 1, 12 to 13. And just this moves it forward to John chapter 2, this is a shorty chapter, and then we're into 3 in the conversation with Nicodemus. And then you go 16, and then you get to 17. A literal translation of the last phrase of verse 16 rendered, <clears throat> And out of his fullness did we all receive even grace over against grace. In the Young's literal translation, should read, <clears throat> actually, even grace in place of grace. Like a wave of an ocean, one replaced the next. Because the Greek word, kai, in this context, has a number of meanings, and this is best rendered here, even, as it describes the action of the previous phrase. And the Greek word transliterated anti is correctly rendered in place of. Most translations, including the NAS, NASB, translate this as something on the order of grace upon grace. NIV, we have all received one blessing after another. All right. King James Version renders the entire verse, and of his fullness have all we received, even grace for grace. In the final analysis, author John is putting an emphasis on the concept of grace, unmerited favor, as it is received by mankind. From the fullness of the word continuously come the unmerited blessings, the grace, from the grace of God to mankind, like the waves of the ocean come one after another. Now, with such a minimal examination of John chapter 1 up through to 17, now can we go to 17? For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Well, the, the law was gracious too. See, you can't draw a conclusion. Was it gracious that God gave the law to Israel? A rule of life? And a statement of what it takes to have righteousness uh, accredited to your account by your own efforts so that you can make it to heaven? And you realize, oh, I, I don't know if I can keep that. Then you're led to a Savior. Isn't that gracious? See, all that's there. You can't shortcut Mr. Joseph Prince. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Out of the fullness of the word did all mankind receive even grace in place of grace, right? The law is a grace gift of the statutes of God's righteousness for temporal blessing through Moses to his people and indirectly to all mankind, was replaced by the grace and truth of God through Jesus Christ. The word become flesh to fulfill the law and by being a sacrifice for sins become the means by which, the grace means by which, an individual could be born of God as the child of God into an eternal familial, eternal life familial relationship with God by grace alone through a moment of faith alone in his name alone. Wow. That's what we get by paying attention, Joseph, to Prince, Joseph Prince, to everything that came before this verse. We just read that. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the one and only from the Father, full of grace and truth. John witnesses, literally witnesses, concerning him, the word, become flesh. And literally cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who after me is coming, has come before me, for he was before me. Wow, does he not know the word? The word, God was the word, the word was God. Added to himself, humanity. 14, verse 14, became flesh. Right? And out of his fullness did we all receive even grace in place of grace. The law gives you the standard and the rule of life for Israel. 
or anybody who wants to be righteous as, as best they can won't be perfect. For because the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the law. See, instead of making them on opposing sides of the story, one is married to the other. See that, Mr. Joseph Prince? Verse 14 stipulates that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among mankind. He goes on to say, We have seen his glory as of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Hence, what was seen by author John and others, the apostles and others, when the word became flesh was a demonstration of God's fullness of grace and truth in his perfect humanity. So the phrase, full of grace and truth, describes the word named as Jesus Christ in verse 17. Verses 16 to 17 then stipulate, and of his fullness we have all received even grace in place of grace. The law was given to Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The grace and truth which came through Jesus Christ thus replaced the provision act of grace, providing the law through Moses. God gave you the standard of his perfection that you need to achieve to, to be a child of God, born of God. Isn't that amazing? And then the grace provision of Jesus Christ made it possible because no man could achieve that standard. But you saw what the standard was leading to the fact that you have the opportunity to believe in His Son for salvation by grace through faith alone. So in order to complete the thought of verse 16, which states, And out of His fullness did we all receive even grace in place of grace, John 1.17a goes on to say, For because the law was given through Moses, evidently as a grace gift out of the fullness of the word, John 15 and 16, which was followed by the next wave of God's grace, which replaced the law, the grace and truth of God, which came through... The perfect humanity of Jesus Christ who, by fulfilling the law himself and being a sacrifice for sins, became the means by which an individual could be born of God as a child of God into an eternal life, familiar relationship with God by grace alone, through a moment of faith alone, in his name alone. Aren't you glad you got this information and not just slapped in the face with, well, there's a law that's on one side of the fence and there's grace on the other. No, they're one and the same. <clears throat> the ongoing grace provision of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the law by definition is a set of statutes. It was given to Moses, to his people, and indirectly to all mankind by the grace and truth of the word, the light of men who has been shining the truth of God into the darkness of humanity from the beginning. John 1, 4 to 5. So the statutes of the law were to be kept by the Israelites to receive the temporal blessings of God. Being God's standard of behavior, it represented the righteousness of God for Israel and indirectly all mankind to know and emulate. Hence, it was for all peoples of the world to follow the principles contained therein and be blessed, not the least of which is to express a moment of faith alone and in sin alone in order to receive the gift of his perfect righteousness, God's and Christ, to provide for them the gift of eternal life. Wow. You got a full picture of that? Second heading on this, verse 17. For the first time, author John provides the name of Jesus Christ, Messiah, Hebrew, Hamashiach, to identify, but not be limited in scope, to the perfect humanity of the Word, the life, the light of men, the Son of God having come into the world. For the world, the Word, Jesus Christ is eternal. He was in the beginning, and forever will be Jesus Christ. That's his name for a century. We look at him as the way, the truth, the life, right? And he's the Word. He's God. Everything that God is, is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, face to face on an equal level. Then must be God. And he was with God in the, in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The beginning of all time. Well, and he's eternal. Only, only God is eternal. So we have two persons of eternity here. <clears throat> so, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of, uh, of the one and only from the Father, full of grace and truth. John witnesses, John the Baptist, concerning him, and let and cried out, literally, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who after me is coming, has come before him, but he have a perception, for he was before me. And out of his fullness did we all receive even grace in place of grace, for because of the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let that sink in. So for the first time, author John provides the name of Jesus Christ, 
to identify but not be limited in scope to the perfect human